And if you want to follow along, you can on the NYFED website by clicking on the August 4th, 2019 paper. Okay, number one. On the set of axes below, line AB is dilated by a scale factor of 5 halves centered at point P. What statement is always true? Well, that's easy because PA is not congruent to AA prime. We can see it over here. AA prime is clearly bigger. So we can cross that one out. What about two? AB, AB is parallel to A prime B prime. Well, that is true in this picture, clearly. And that's because A prime B prime does not have any changes in shape, only in size. That's essentially what dilation does. So in any case where something is dilated, it will still have the same slope. So I'm gonna keep my eye on that one because it is always true. What about three? Well, it says that AB is equal to A prime B prime. Well, that's clearly not true. Again, because dilation means something changes in size. If something is dilated and you have this new image, that new image is not, not equal to the original. Nope. Number four. Five, five halves times A prime B prime is equal to AB. Well, first of all, that would only be true in this case where we have a scale factor of exactly five halves. And second of all, a, this doesn't work because a prime b prime is the new image. So multiplying the bigger image by the scale factor will just result in an even bigger image, not your original one. This is wrong. That means that two is the only correct one. So, one is choice two. Next. Number two. The coordinates of the vertices of parallelogram C, D, E, H are C, negative five, comma five, D, two, comma five, E, negative one, comma negative one, and H, negative eight, comma negative one. What are the coordinates of P, the point of intersection diagonals C, E, and D, H? Well, this is decently simple because parallelogram di uh, diagonals bisect each other, meaning that they intersect at the midpoint. So all we need to do is use the midpoint formula in order to find where these two intersect. So, let's take one of the diagonals, precisely C, E. So, here's C, here's E. So, X1 would be negative 5. X2, negative 1. And Y1 would be 5. Y2 would be negative 1. So that gives us what? Oh, okay. Negative six over two, which is negative three, comma four over two, which is two. So negative three over two is the correct answer. All right, move on to the next one. So number three. Oh. The coordinates of the endpoints of QS are Q, negative 9, 8, and S, 9, comma, negative 4. Point R is on QS such that QR to RS is in the ratio of 1 to 2. What are the coordinates of point R? Well, first of all, this is Q and this is S. They provide scrap graph paper. Uh, at the end of the exam for you to do this on the, uh, your own, but that scrap, graph, uh, pa uh, that scrap graph paper is right all the way at the end of this exam, so it wouldn't be viable for us to do it with the smart board. So, this 
would be y2 minus y1, which would be 12. This would be x2 minus x1, which would be 18. So this, these two lengths, and using the Pythagorean theorem, we can find out that the hypotenuse is the square root of 468, which converts into 6 square root of 13. So now we're trying to split it into a ratio of 1 to 2, which means that we can actually use proportions in order to do it that way. So R. So splitting it into 1 to 2 means that this QR must actually be one third of 6 root 13. Well, this must be two thirds. So this is two root 13. And you can use proportions in order to get your way here. So you can say maybe if you wanted to find this side, so let's draw it, Q, R, two root 13. So if you wanted to find this side, you could say 18 is to 6 root 3, 13, as this is equal, it is to 2 root 13. So, of course, multiplying both sides by 2 root 13 will give you 18 over 3 is x, or in other words, x is 6. So that means this is 6. And using the Pythagorean theorem, or by using the same proportions method, we deduce that this is 4. So now, we can, because you have scrap graph paper, you can do this much easier because you can immediately deduce the coordinates of R. However, because I can't use scrap graph paper, it's going to be a bit harder. So, uh, 2 root 13, so that means that we have Q, which is negative 9, 8, and we go 4 down, which is negative 9, 4, and 6 to the right, which is negative 3, 4, which would be choice 3. All right. So, that means that 3 is choice 3. Let's move on to the next one. 4. If the altitudes of a triangle meet at one of the triangle's vertices, then the triangle is an obtuse triangle. That's easy. In the diagram below of ACD, DB is a median to AC and AB is congruent to DB. AB is congruent to DB. AB is congruent to BC because DB is a median. Thus, that means that DB and BC are congruent. So, since MDAB is 32 degrees, and we're trying to find BDC, well, because BD and BC are equivalent, that means that this is also an isosceles triangle. So this is 32 as well. And using the fact that the sum of all angles in a triangle are 180, we deduce that this is 116, which is 180 minus 32 minus 32, and thus this is 64, because these two are supplementary. So now, 64, and now these two, BDC and BCD, are the same. I'm going to refer to their measures as X. So 64 plus 2x must be equal to 180. So dividing by 2, 32 plus x is 90. So that would be x equals 58 degrees. So 5 is 3.